was your break? Alright, I, I love the woo culture that we have right now. <laughs> so, um, I am so glad we had that break. There was, a, um, Erica, that was an excellent talk. And, um, like, recovered, and now I'm kind of going to bring you guys a little bit back to that place that we started. Um, so, the topic is Remember the Pain, and this is kind of some lessons that I learned from teaching myself how to cook. The reason that I want to do this talk today is because when we acquire the skills that we have for our job today or for the environment that we're in, um, it's very intuitive for us to repress that pain, uh, to acquire those skills, because it's like survival, right? Like you don't want to remember how painful it was. Um, but I think that there is some, oh, maybe I don't have to bend, okay, yeah, okay. So I think that there's some value in remembering that pain. Uh, spoiler alert, I taught myself how to code. Um, so, how do I go to the... I got this, I got this. Okay, next slide. Um, so, if you were to go on LinkedIn, my trajectory looks something like this, which looks like this perfect onward and upward uh, journey. So I actually graduated as a mechanical engineer, and I was an energy analyst for two years at PA Consulting. And then, somehow, poof magic, I ended up at Recur Center, formerly known as Hacker School, so that's like a writer's retreat for coders. Um, kind of like a coding school, but without the school part. No tests, no quizzes, no certification. And somehow, ended up at my first software job, and then went to another, and now I'm an engineer at Pivotal Labs for 10 months in counting. So, this is a beautiful picture that I painted for you guys, um, but it doesn't really highlight the struggle that we had in between. So, when I was an analyst, um, an energy analyst, in consulting, I decided to quit my job completely and try to learn this coding thing. And I was incredibly terrified because I had gone. To, I was living in New York, and they have um, the New York Tech Meetup, and it's like this really cool, awe-inspiring, 400-plus person meetup where you can go and you can see some of the latest startups, and then afterwards you can go network upstairs, and then that would be really inspiring, the whole presentation piece, and then I'd go upstairs, and then I would see like a bunch of people who already knew each other, who would just continue the conversation they had from a month ago. I didn't look like anyone, like I'm... <laughs> Uh, for those of you who can't see, I'm like wearing a purple dress with yellow confidence heels, and um, I like definitely wore something like this to my first New York Tech meetup, and I was like, oh my god, I don't look like anyone here. So somehow between um, me not being sure that I could do it, and finally just having all my friends encourage me that I could actually do it, and me finally being like, I will take your word for this, but if you're wrong, it's all your fault. Um, I decided to quit my job, and it took me nine months to get to my first software job. And entering my surf, uh, so in order to do this, I had to evolve my skill set. And evolving my skill set needed a lot of time, energy, nurturing, and love. And uh, I'm missing one key ingredient, and that would be tears. There were a lot of tears. There was a lot of me fighting with myself, with my friends, and with the people around me because there was one side of me who was very confident in what I could do, and there was another side of me that was very uncertain. There were some expectations that I set around myself. And uh, reconciling that was really hard. I don't think this is necessarily, this is not exclusive to learning how to program. This is something that we go through when we're trying to emerge into a new world, a new sphere, a new department, a new job, um, and it's like we are becoming children all over again. So this is me as a child. I'm so cute as a child. Um, my parents asked me what happened, and I don't have an answer for that. Um, but they're joking. They love me very much. Um, so this is what I wanted to be. I wanted to be this child in the tech world. And in order to do that, um, there was a gestation period, right? So there was this nine months of nurturing that I went through. And I wanted to illustrate what that story arc looks like. Because I think we can all relate to it. And I'm obviously purposely making you in touch with this pain. So I'm sorry, but we'll channel it to something good soon. 
So this is the first piece, right? The first trimester, trimester, trimester. That's a pretty good word combo. Okay, trimester uh, was the dreamland, right? I was learning a lot. I was starting to be exposed to this entire world that I wanted to join. And it was awesome. But then I hit this like turning point around three months where I started to realize how much I didn't know. It was so wonderful to have no idea what I didn't know. And then when I hit that, it was the second trimester and it was called panic. And so it was like, have I done anything in these last three months? Um, what have I done? And how am I going to get to this very distant goal that I have to enter into the tech world? Um, around this time, I got into hacker school, now called Recur Center. And even then, when I, so funny story, uh, um, like many program, coding programs, Hacker School also has an application process, and I got rejected the first two times, and there was a lot of tears between that and trying to get myself to apply for a third time. When I finally got in, you'd think that I thought I'd made it, but actually I was just more cognizant of what I didn't know. And I think I felt less confident at that point than I did when I started. So there's the, the second trimester, there's panic, right? And this happens when anyone learns anything, right? You start off being like really high hopes, really excited about what you're doing, and then you're like, oh my god, can I do this? I don't know. And then there's a third trimester, and that's getting into the groove. So that's what happened in the last three months. I had a good way of working. I could figure out a large problem and how to break it apart and how to ask the right questions to get help. This was awesome. So you think, right, um, after these nine months I got my first software job, super happy baby, really excited, but <laughs> actually um, I was really excited, but there was also a lot of tears <laughs> in the um, And uh, this is like a really awesome YouTube video, by the way. Um, there was this period where I thought I was done with my story arc, right? I had my dreamland, I had my panic, I had my groove, and now I'm going through it again. And emerging into the tech world was terrifying. So let me illustrate that to you so that um, we can get back in touch with that feeling that once was. So, emerging to the tech world was terrifying because there was a lot of lingo. So, there was like acronyms, API, GUI, devs down, prods down, acceptance is down, testing is down. What are these words and what is like git push pull and what are, what, why do I have to know all of these random words? What's a PDP? What's like a grid? It seemed like everyone else knew all these terms, and I had no idea what was going on. And that's just the work lingo, right? But there's also this like internal culture jokes and like a way of talking that I had no idea about, right? I come from like this very polished consulting world, and uh, it's funny because you learn this whole lingo to get into consulting, and then you have to forget everything. Because if you use like touch base or synergy in like a <laughs> dev environment, you will be, you will be burned at the stake, right? Like you don't use those words, but there's other cool words to use, right? So that was like a whole undoing where I'm like, okay, yeah, like gotta be cool, can't use those words anymore. Um, and then on top of that, there was just like not trying to bring the website down, right? So <laughs> funny story, I've done that before. Um, at my first job at Rent the Runway, fashion e-commerce company. I knew something was wrong with my code, but I didn't know what. And I was like trying to get help, but I didn't know how to voice it. So I pushed an infinite loop onto Prod and uh, brought down the whole site for like, you know, one or two hours. I do not know how much money I cost him. Uh, I am still employable. I, Pivotal, please don't forsake me. Um, <laughs> this happened a long time ago. I've totally learned my lesson now. Um, so there was like all of these things, right, about emerging into tech that I was going through all over again. And the thing is, we're all newborns in tech at one point. So I know this is going to be a little hard, but I'm actually going to ask if you're comfortable with it to talk to each other, and this is built into our time for our presentation,
talk to each other, introduce yourselves if you want to, and talk about what it was like to start your first job in gaming or tech, and share a memorable failure. So. <laughs> you guys got to um, realize that everyone's story is different, but there are also commonalities between your stories and other people's stories, right? Uh, hopefully, yeah? Yes? <laughs> okay, I got laughter, so I'm assuming that's a yes. Yay, good. Um, so, Going beyond your own story and the people that are around you, um, the next logical question is, who are the children in your world? Who are the people in your workplace who are new joiners, or who come from a different background, or who are changing departments and joining yours, or who are getting promoted and who are trying to acquire a new skill set, or who are learning a new language, or who are trying something new for the first time? Who are those people, and what can you do to help them? I don't have all those answers, um, and if I did, I would have a phenomenal presentation. But I think that these are good questions to ask, and I think that the answer is different for everyone. But I do have one piece of advice that my mom told me. So she gave me this very obvious fact that I think can be extrapolated into a larger metaphor which is that the challenges of a four-year-old are drastically different from those of a two-year-old. Um, and what we mean by that is that it's very easy to reminisce about those were the days, right? It was always so easy back then. And for a four-year-old, that's what they're going to think about the two-year-old, right? They're going to say, oh, your problem's walking? Like, what about, like, interacting with other people and objects when you're trying to run, right? <laughs> You don't think about that as a two-year-old because you still can't... I don't actually know what the challenges are of a two-year-old. They, they can probably walk by then, but... You know. You know what I mean, right? So, um, they're very different, and it's very hard for us to think about what it was like a year ago or two years ago to join our field. And also, um, we think that like children have it so easy, right? And like, those were the days. But I'm pretty sure that as a child, everything that you went through was the worst and best thing that's ever happened to you up until that point, right? It's very hard to think beyond that. Like, as a child, you're not like, oh, well this is hard, but when I become a parent, it's gonna be so much harder, right? <laughs> everything is the maximum that it is. And it's okay for it to be like that. And it's up to us who have more experience to put ourselves in the shoes of back then and remember that pain. On top of that, we're basically still children, right? Like, we still throw temper tantrums, we're still, like, sharing videos of cats and screaming goats, and we still need nap time, right? So, like, are we really different from those who are new? Um, and those people who are new, those people who are considered children, like ourselves, because we can relate to this, um, are great for a company in our environment. They're learning every day. They're bringing a new sense of curiosity. When people ask questions, it can be initially annoying, right? Because there's like 50 questions, why this, why that, right? But sometimes it's indicative of a larger problem or a larger opportunity. And that's a good thing. People question when they're trying to understand something, and you want someone questioning and trying to understand what's going on. And finally, they're the people who are the future. They can imagine the future, and they can work with you to make it happen. It's important to incorporate these people into our culture. So um, with that, here are some things that I wish I'd heard more often when I joined the field or any company that I've been at. Um, and luckily, I heard these at least once or twice because I couldn't think up of this unless I'd heard it, right? So just more often. Um, the first one is that it was very hard for me to dissociate being dumb and not knowing something. So I finally had someone sit me down when I was in hacker school or recur center, and they said, it's not that you're dumb, it's just that you don't know it yet. And that distinction for me changed everything. I stopped trying to tell myself that I hadn't thought of, you know, uh, trying a different package or checking my version or um, 
using a tool, like a Chrome Dev tool that I've never heard about. I can't do that because I don't know it, it exists. And that's not because I'm dumb, it's because I just don't know that I can do that. Um, the second one, which is kind of why we have this interactive activity, is to hear about other people's failures and face palms. Um, I love you all very much, and all I get to hear about are usually your um, accomplishments, except for in rare like instances like this conference. Usually I'm hearing about everyone's accomplishments, and I feel very excited about them, but then I feel like you guys are on a pedestal, and I don't know how to get there. I feel like it's very hard and unattainable. Hearing about your failures and face palms means that we are all human, and um, that I can get there someday, too. It's more relatable. The third one is, uh, so, when I was learning how to code, um, a lot of people like to give me advice and give me help. But a lot of people would do this thing I um, like to coin as like information grenading. So you take information, you throw it over a brick wall, and then you run away, right? <laughs> so someone's like, oh, try that package, just look it up on Google, and uh, that's it, that's all I got. So it's going to explode on me, and then you're not going to be anywhere there to help pick up the pieces. Or you'll have to come back two hours later and be like, what happened, Neha? I told you to look at the package. What happened? So that's the scenario that I don't want us all to emulate. And my suggestion is that if someone's trying to learn something new, you can say, hey, it looks like you're trying to do X. I did something similar. Would you like to see what I did? Or, even better, do you want to go through this together? I work in a very wonderful culture right now where we pair program, and we do that for a whole day, which is a lot in an, its own beast, uh, but also very wonderful because I can learn a lot that way. And before that, it was very hard to get someone to sit with me and work through something together, but I got a lot of value out of it, I still do, and now that I've seen the light, I'm much more willing to do it myself. So just take my work, word for it and try it. Um, that's basically it. Uh, hopefully from this talk, you uh, have learned that doing something for the first time is terrifying. Uh, remembering that pain is a good thing, and you can channel those memories to help other people.